Okay, so we're back to talking a little bit about basic animation, and we want to talk now about using the timeline. Okay, so first of all, let's say that we have three seconds of video animated, and we want to make this, uh, let's say, five seconds. So just type in 150 frames. Uh, that's going to give us more time along our timeline. We can then go to the window and down to timeline, and it's going to show us a view of uh, our overall timeline. If we open this up a little bit, you'll see that there's a, there it shows our keyframes for position, scale, and rotation. And in this case, we also have one for radius for this sphere that's moving up and down. Now, what we, what we can do is we can, we can grab this and drag the whole viewport out to 150. We can also then select all of these items. It's going to select all the keyframes, and we can just simply drag this out and extend it to 150. All right, and what this is going to do is let's go back to our um, to our animation. Now look at how it's moved our keyframes. All right, so we had one originally at 45, and now this one's at 75, and then the end one is now at 150. So it's stretched out our animation. And when we watch this, notice how it's slower. Okay, there's slower growth. Right, so it's kind of a you know sometimes you can work with just a few frames, animate something how you want it to be. You can go to the timeline, you can stretch it out so it's longer, it's a slower animation, and then you can add more keyframes or change it accordingly. So it, the timeline is really useful in, in ways of, of controlling that, uh, that amount of form. Now the other thing about the timeline is there's also a way to control the speed. So you can physically move these, these keyframes like this. That's sort of, you know, oh, they're all selected right now, so let's just click out of that. You can just grab one and move it around like this to sort of control the speed. Um, you can also control what's called the F curve. So if I go up here to the top, next to this little key button is, a, is one that looks like a little heartbeat monitor. It's, it, this is the F curves. And uh, what it does is it shows you a, a view of, it's going to sort of scroll this down a little bit. So these are our keyframes that we have sort of moving back and forth. And this, this is, uh, if you click on this center keyframe, you can control the ramp or the rate of that movement. All right. So if I wanted it to be, and actually we can kind of do this simultaneously. So let's go, let's minimize this for a second. Let's play this guy so we can watch it. Let's go back to our timeline view. And you can control these slider bars, right? So I can ramp this like this. Uh, watch how it changes the speed here. It's going to start very slow, it's going to get big, and then it's going to slow back down again, all right? So, or we can sort of change it the other way and have a different type of ramp, and then it's going to move very, let's go to get to the beginning again. It's going to move very quickly up and then slowly move back down. So you can control the type of speed that the keyframes have by using the F curves sort of moving back and forth, okay? So that's working with the timeline, and that becomes really helpful. So just know that when you, when you start moving an object around, there's lots of ways to continue manipulating that without going back to the individual keyframes and trying to reprogram and punch in new keyframes. It's good to sort of keep to a few keyframes that you can control in the timeline or, uh, or just looking at the, the path and controlling it rather than dropping in, let's say, 30 keyframes for one simple motion. It's just going to make things a lot smoother and a lot, more, uh, a lot easier to handle in that way. All right. So that's, that's working with, uh, the, essentially working with um, the, uh, the timeline. All right, now I'm going to open up one more new, uh, new file here. Uh, I'm going to talk right now about uh, deformers. You guys are going to like this. I think they're pretty fun. What we're going to do is we're going to bring in a cube, and the, de the deformers, what they're going to do is they're going to take the polygon structure, and they're going to be able to manipulate it. So you can bend it, so you can bulge it out so you can um, kind of shear it off to one angle or so you can wrap it around in different ways. But in order for us to do this, we want to make sure we have enough polygons, okay? So imagine that uh, this cube right now, you know, it has, it has just one polygon per side and imagine it to be like made out of steel. If we were trying to bend this thing, it would be really hard to kind of bend it, right? But let's say instead we think about it as, as a bunch of layers of, of sheets of metal on top of one another with a spine almost. Like something that has a spine is going to be able to bend a lot easier, a lot smoother, okay? So let's just go ahead and add a bunch of segments here. Let's add like five segments per side and, uh, and talk a little bit about how this works. 
so if you go to uh, if you if you do that, you can go to the uh, um, oh, and then make this editable. Okay, so those polygons can be manipulated. Now let's just start with a bend tool. Okay, what you're going to do is you drop it into Former. It's going to give you this little purple box, which is essentially the parameters for the deformation. Okay, and the control that we have for this is this little bar on top. This little yellow cube is, is a handle and you can pull that handle in uh, different directions and you can see what's happening now it's kind of like bending over to the side if we take that then and make it a child of our cube object it's going to bend along that form okay now the cool thing about this is that you can animate this all right so anything uh, like let's go to the bend here anything along along those lines you can sort of manipulate and, and, and keyframe now when using the deformers the easiest thing to do to keyframe them is to use the auto keyframe so if we go back to zero click the auto keyframe uh, and just start our animation uh, drop a keyframe in here let's move to 45 grab this handle and kind of move it down and then go to 90 and then move it way over here Okay, now if we turn the auto keyframe off, we play this, you can see that it's starting to manipulate and bend it. All right, we're getting some sort of motion in there. Okay, so that's, that's essentially the way that you can utilize the deformers. Now, let's just, let's just talk a little bit about why, uh, you know, why it's important to, to have multiple segments. I'm just going to erase this guy for right now. I'm going to drop in a new cube and a new bend, and uh, we're going to apply this right to this cube right here. Now remember this this cube only has one polygon per side, right? And look at the look at the difference in this. It tries to bend but it's it it keeps those rigid parameters. Okay? So it's if if we go to the cube and we add more segments and uh, do try to do the same thing. Now we're going to be able to get a smoother uh a, whoops. Select the bend there. We'll be able to get a smoother curve, all right? So the more polygon separations, the smoother deformation you can get. So just remember that if it's not working out so well, try to add more segments. That will help a lot. All right, so let's get rid of this guy. Let's talk about a few more of them because they're kind of fun. Twist is a good one. Twist is just how it sounds. You take something and you twist it around like that. And then apply to again take the deformer and drop it and make it a child of your of your object and you can really twist and bend it around. All right. Now with twist you can get to a point where you've twisted way beyond its its you know structure allows it to. It gets kind of these fake sort of lines for it. But again you know you can really control and manipulate those forms that way. Uh, question: More of these deformers here. We have bulge, which is again kind of how it sounds. You can make it like get really fat. Drop that on there, you can see it bulges out, or it can become really skinny. So again, you know, you can imagine your text or an object kind of like really animated and getting wide and skinny again. It does go up and down. Sure. What's that? Bulge. Yeah, that's a good question. So you can also, I'm just working with the zero axis, so you can change the axis here, and then you could uh, bulge out other ways as well. So if we do that, then we get to see how it changes the orientation. All yeah, that's good. Yeah, so all the deformers, if you change the orientation of them around the object. The other thing that I like to do with with deformers is, all right, let's say we take this and bulge it out like this. You can you can keyframe the bulge itself to move, right? So see how we're getting it to kind of stretch and move. It's like changing its orientation to the object, right? So you could you could you could keyframe that as well and and allow that to really be a part of your animation too. So there's really kind of interesting, I mean, you could just, you can already imagine like, you know, just really cartoon qualities of these objects by moving, the, moving those deformers around in different ways. Um, another one would be shear, and shear just allows you to kind of like move something a little bit to the side, you know, or in different directions. So it keeps its, notice how it keeps its footing, okay? Keeps its footing like that and kind of shears it from one side to the next. Um, so that's, that's shear. We also have, whoops. Taper is a really useful one. Okay, so if you just want to take an object and sort of shrink it down like this, drop that on there. Uh, you can see that it's going to taper that down. So that's a really helpful, useful one to use. Um, what else do we have here? This is for modeling. 
formula is for um, wind is kind of a fun one. Formula is like makes a puddle. Wind. I'm gonna stretch this out here and drop this one on here. Oops. There we go. So wind allows you to have kind of a. We, it's gonna like keyframe. So you see how it's it's applying like a wind. It's like makes a windy sort of uh, surface across the, across the surface. Let's add some more keyframes here. Oh, not that many. There we go. So here you can see it's like if you took a, a plane and you added that wind object to it, it would make it look like a, a flag waving in the breeze. So experiment with these. I think they're pretty fun to play with. And uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can make abstractions. You can make things really have a, a sense of, of movement without actually doing complex character animations or anything like that. Uh, melt is a fun one. You know, melt is going to allow this thing to kind of like slowly flatten down so it can start out like a cube and then melt down, right? So that's another one that's kind of fun. So play around with these, uh, um, these uh, uh, deformers. I think they're really fun to use. And of course, that if we're using text, we can apply those to text as well. So let's just go for a quick review of that. We drop in a, a basic text object, and then we grab a um, uh, extrude nerves. Uh, we drop the text uh, into the extrude nerves. Uh, we give it a little bit of depth. I might make it a little bit more depth here. Let's make this like uh, 70. That's pretty good. And then uh, if we make this object editable, if we click on the extrude nerves and make it editable, now we can apply some deformers to it. So again, you know, uh, let's just, I like the bulge with the text. I think that's kind of fun. So let's just take this one and put it on here. And now we can, uh, you know, you can already imagine how you can really manipulate some movement for your text in that sort of way. So consider, uh, you know, when you're thinking about your logo, Thinking about your mo uh, moving text, text can move physically in space, but it can also change its shape and form and, uh, and composition overall. And the deformers are going to be something that will help you do that. Okay, so once you have a basic animation, we can, view, we can play this out and preview it. Oh, sorry about that. What happened? Oh, I know what happened. All right, so this is my animation that I've created. If I previewed in the editor, you can see what's happening. Let's say we want to preview this whole thing just to view it to see what it looks like overall uh, in process. You can go up to Render, and you can go down to here where it says Make Preview. Here, just click on this. It's going to give you some options. Um, let's just keep it at this. Right now it's uh, 320 by 240 at 30 frames per second. You just hit OK. What it's going to do is it's going to open up uh, QuickTime. It's going to calculate the preview. You can see at the bottom there it's calculating the preview. Um, so once that's finished, it'll just open up QuickTime, and then you can uh, you know just get a little view as to what that what it will look like if we play that out. All right. So there's our you know started our animation there. We can just hit play and we can watch it go. All right. So it's just a quick and easy way. And if you hit uh, Command L in QuickTime, it loops it. So you can just watch it over and over again, see how it's working. So when you're starting to work with animation, before you render it out as a finished composition, uh, you can always preview it first and just see how, that, how that's looking, and then obviously make your changes along the way. And then, of course, you can preview individual frames. If you just move ahead or, or behind in the timeline and just do the render preview, you'll get an individual frame that shows how you're working so far. All right, well, that's it. Um, by next class, we want to see some moving text and talk a little bit more about... Um, how to how to finish this project so